Okay, our first guest this morning is a very interesting gentleman, and his name is John Hollingsworth, and he's going to talk about some of the creative things that he's working on. John, glad welcome. To be here. Glad, glad, you, glad you came in, and I'm really excited about some of this, the data education, and, and also uh -huh. you do other things besides that. Well, I have a company called DataWorks Educational Research, oh. and we've been helping students learn more for 20 years. And as part of that, we actually wrote some books. We'll talk about the book in a minute. Good, good. We've traveled to Australia and China to train teachers and teach students. Fabulous. So we've done quite a lot. Oh, my gosh. So what, whatever brought this on? What, what made you think of doing something like this? Well, actually, my wife, Dr. Sylvia Barra, was a teacher in Fresno uh -oh. at Roosevelt High School. Oh, yeah, that's and, a great high school. And she started getting some grants there. She got some grants, and eventually we started our own little research company. Mm -hmm. And we started very small. I think we wrote some science lessons for the Fresno County uh, school systems, mm -hmm. and then it kind of grew from there. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. And we've kind of been all over the world now. And, you know, a few years ago, we were asked to write a book. And I know today is part of we're going to talk about books. Oh, good. So we wrote this book, Explicit Direct Instruction. Wow. So <laughs> we actually started by analyzing test scores. That's why our name is DataWorks. Oh. And I used to show the test to principals, and one day a principal said, don't show me the test scores, show me how to increase the test scores. <laughs> I was like, wow, we're looking at the wrong stuff. Wow. We started looking at curriculum. We collected two million assignments over the years to see where kids were being taught. I and mean, I think we finally have been in 30 or 40,000 classrooms. We've probably worked oh, with 50,000 teachers. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Oh, I'm so excited you're bringing this information <laughs> out on this. Well, then we finally wrote a book. We said, we'll put together everything we've got, and it's called Explicit Direct Instruction. It's kind of our teaching model. And there's a lot of teaching models out there, so mm -hmm. we kind of wrote our own. And then I didn't think about it too much. I knew it was kind of a bestseller in the educational field. And then we got this plaque, I guess it was two years ago, that we'd sold a million dollars worth of books. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> and I was kind of surprised because the publisher never talked to me. I never got much feedback from them. And so then I think they said, can you write another book? Oh, wow. And then we wrote one for... English learners, I don't know if you're familiar with English learners, we have a lot of Hispanic students in the valley mm -hmm. and they need extra support in learning English. Oh sure, and I so mean it's, English is not an easy language to learn. Well then we wrote the upgraded, like this is the second edition of mm -hmm. this one. Now, I'll tell you something really funny, I had a guy call me from the Netherlands and he says we really like this explicit direct instruction, he says can I translate it into Dutch? Oh, my wonderful. This is the number one educational book in the Netherlands for the last two years. <laughs> and it's in the 10th printing. Oh, my gosh, now you, can't, you guys. You can't understand it. No. <laughs> but it is a translation of our book. It was pretty interesting. Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic. I, I you know, so many people are writing books and trying to express how they feel about things right. and stuff. But not that many are getting sales like that. I mean, that is fantastic. Well, we're not trying to make a political statement. No. We're trying to basically improve learning for students. Let me tell you a couple of tips that are in our book. Good. You were a student once, I'm sure. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and I was. Everybody, I went to school here in Fresno. And <clears throat> you know how a teacher will teach something and then she'll ask a question. Mm -hmm. And the kids will raise their hand and she'll pick someone. Okay, in our method of teaching, we don't have kids raise their hands we have their names and we pull their names and we call random students oh. so the students never know when they're going to be called upon and they actually pay more attention and also the teacher has a better feel if the students are learning that's it it's, it's not the same three kids all the time I know that's wonderful so and our whole book is like strategies like that and I've got one more very interesting one there's a strategy called pair share so when the teacher asks a question you turn to your partner and you and you discuss your answer first, and then you turn back and you're ready to be selected. During that pair share, think about this, every student practices the answer and says the answer and hears the answer. Even though the teacher usually only calls three students, every kid gets to practice an answer. 
Great ideas. So, <clears throat> Great ideas. I'm not going to say we made up every strategy. No, it doesn't but matter. But we kind of put them together. Right, putting them together and teaching people how to do what they need to do. Yeah, and we train teachers. Well, let me tell you another thing. We got an email from Australia about five years ago, I guess four years ago, said, can you come to Australia and teach some of this? Mm. And, you know, the flight to Australia is about a 24-hour trip out of Fresno. Wow. So I got there, and we did training for, I think, 10 straight days. <clears throat> These are at remote aborigine villages. One of them is 10 hours on a dirt road to get there. <laughs> So that wasn't practical, so they rented these little airplanes. You've probably seen little private planes. Oh, yeah. So there'd be a pilot, something like a bush pilot, and I would be in the back <laughs> like this, and we'd land on the dirt strip in the middle of nowhere, and a four-wheel drive would pick us up. And actually, I have a couple slides of uh, Australia. I think there's a slide number two that, I don't know, I can't tell exactly what's on the screen right now, but you can see... Uh, if you look up there, you see me pointing to the board, uh -huh. and you see the Aboriginal students in their green yeah, uniforms. Yeah. You probably can't see in the picture. Oh, there they are, oh, that's my a good students. One. That's a good. Oh, look at them! They're, they're so happy. <laughs> Most well, of my kids in school are going like this, and they're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big success. I tried to do a little PE. You notice they don't wear shoes to school there. Oh. You know, in America we have to wear shoes, but the, over there they're not wearing shoes and. Huh. You'd be surprised you had a little race, and they all beat me. <laughs> I thought I could run, do a little exercise. It was part of our training over there, so that didn't quite work. Well, it made them feel good. <laughs> I don't know how, how it meant for you. Yeah. Oh, there was the slide that just went by in one Oops. of the little planes. So we flew in those little planes. All, yeah, there it is. You can oh, see yeah. me in the plane. There's the pilots right in front of me. You know. Gosh, this is an exciting job. Well, I have another one. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> Come on, what happened? About two years ago, we got a call from a professor in China. Mm -hmm. It turns out more students are learning English in China than speak English in the United States. 300 million students are taking English in school every day in China. Oh, my gosh. And I wrote well, another... Yeah, because they're, they're, they're trying to take over us, so it's got to happen. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you can argue that uh, English might be the language of business for the world, mm -hmm. and they want people to participate in the global economy. Mm -hmm. And I had written a book, Explicit Direct Instruction, I should say my wife and I, John Hollingsworth and Sylvia Ybarra, <laughs> uh, for English learners. Oh, yeah. And so the professor had read that book, and he called me to come over, and Sylvia and I ended up training 1,600 teachers in China. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And oh, there you can see there's a slide up there. Uh, we oh, had oh my a large group out there. This is exciting, my gosh. Then they invited us to observe model lessons. Uh -huh. So there's Chinese. T oh, there you see the professor right there. He's holding up my book. Uh -huh. I don't know if you can see from the picture, it's this book. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay. This was so funny. He's giving the presentation in Chinese, in Mandarin. So I couldn't understand a word of it, but EDI is our short name for explicit direct instruction. So he's going up there in Mandarin, blah, 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 EDI, blah, blah, EDI. <laughs> so he's a big promoter of EDI. And so then we went around and we observed classes, we gave feedback to them. Now I got an email from him. He's going to send 30 principals here in January for us to train them <laughs> In the United States, in Fowler, California. This is so exciting. My gosh, it's just and, blossomed and blossomed. Well, let me tell you one little tricky part. They don't speak English. Oh, that's going to be fun for you. Huh? Well, we're going to have to have translators. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's another slide that just went by of Oops, one of the trainings there it. in uh, uh, right there. there. That's is. one of the schools we went to. Uh, Sylvia's in there. You see me. There's a couple of the Chinese teachers. I think Sylvia's the third one over from me. Okay. And, uh, oh, there's one of the lessons, uh, the teachers you see teaching. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they asked us to give feedback on the instructional practices. Could we give tips to it? So then we would give, you know, messages to the teachers there. You know what I find the most exciting is there's so many kids that get through school and they, they just don't participate right. they just sit there and get through and they're not learning anything and it's not in the fault teachers doing the job but some of them just can't 
put themselves forward enough. So having them chosen, right. not not this, but having them chosen makes them come forward. Well, we do a couple of other things. Remember I said we do the pair share where the students talk to themselves? I want to make sure the students are all prepared to answer. I don't want to catch them off guard. Now, another thing we do, this sounds very simple, we always teach first. We don't ask who knows what this means, who knows what photosynthesis is. No, we teach what it is first, and after we taught, we ask questions afterwards. Fantastic. Well, I'm so, so glad you came in today, <laughs> and I really want to hope that you'll come in again and talk about this because it's an exciting thing for the people here in Fresno to hear what you guys are doing. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Yes, we'll thank come you. come another time. Thank you so <laughs> much. We'll be right back.